So we've seen that if we have a wire loop and we increase or decrease the current through it, it fights back. It generates an electromotive force of voltage opposing the change. So if we're trying to increase the voltage, it tries to push back and decrease it. If we're trying to decrease it, it pushes forward and increases it. Let's try and do some maths behind that. Let's work out how big this fighting voltage is. So let's assume we have a cardboard cylinder here with wire looped around. We have n loops over a length d. Now, when we turn it on, there will be a magnetic field coming through. How big is that magnetic field going to be? Well, we know from the equation for a solenoid that the magnetic field is going to be mu naught n times the current over d. Note this is a different equation from what we saw before. Here n is the number of loops, whereas previously n was a number of loops per unit length, which is why we have the over d here. Okay, so that's how much magnetic field we're generating, but how much effect is that going to have? How much electromotive force is that going to produce? Well, we know that the electromotive force is going to be minus d magnetic flux by d time if you just had one loop. So for just one loop, the magnetic flux is going to be the magnetic field, mu naught n i over d times the area, which is pi r squared for the circle here. If we have n loops, as we actually do, you have to multiply by n because you get this n times. So the electromotive force is going to be minus the rate of change of that. Now, everything here is going to remain the same except for the current, so we can take them all out. So we get mu naught n squared pi r squared over d, and then it's di by d time. And we know this is going to point in a direction opposite this, so we put a minus sign in front, uh, that opposing the change in current. Now this is called self-inductance, and it's usually written as the EMF of the inductor is minus L times di by dt, where L is called the inductance or the self-inductance. If we compare this version of the equation with that one, we can just see that the inductance in this particular case is equal to mu naught n squared pi r squared over d. And it's measured in units of the Henry, which is a volt seconds per ampere, named after the American physicist Joseph Henry, who was a contemporary Faraday. And this is the crucial equation for inductors as used in electrical circuits. What it's telling you is they give a voltage which opposes any change you're trying to make, the di by dt, and the magnitude of that is given by the inductance, which for this particular sort of loop is given by something like that.